this this is the uh, model of the uterus this is actually the correct size with the ovary and the tubes and this is the vagina the sanitary pads have over the years moved from being cotton content to becoming more and more nylon content and now they have a whole lot of things from the styrofoam to the acetone to you know products from the refinery industry uh, to products from the tire industry all sorts of things and nobody writes as to what is in a sanitary pad the contents of a sanitary pad so that is the big disadvantage that we have we don't know what the sanitary pad is made of there are two lovely options that are available to us now and i will talk about both of them okay the first option that is available to us is the cloth pad the cloth was what my mother and my grandmother and the generations before that used that the only problem was that the cloth pads were made of you know old cloth and people used to hang it inside their bathrooms where there was no ventilation and no sun so therefore it got itself a bad name but currently the cloth pads that are available now are made of new cloth material very nice very comfortable with wings like the sanit disposable sanitary napkins are so it's made of layers it doesn't leak and it is very comfortable and on top of it when you need to after you have used it maximum what you need in a period is about five pads and after you have soiled the pad you soak it in a mug of water and then allow it to be there for 30 minutes and then rinse it all out throw that into the pot and then wash wash this and hang it out in the sun all you have to do is to hang it out in the sun and India as a country has abundant sun so that's the only sterilization that you need to do for this so the cloth pads are very comfortable five cloth pads that can last you for one and a half to two years so which means that if I start my menarche at 10 and I go on to 20 years that it means in the 10 years I have used about 25 pads as against what I need to use is 1800 disposable napkins sanitary disposable napkins so that is a huge save on the environment the pads are very comfortable for me and it's a saving on my purse too the option two is the menstrual cup the menstrual cup is made of medical grade silicon and it is inserted into the vagina and it acts as a receptacle to collect the blood that flows down from the uterus through the cervix into the vagina so this is where it sits very comfortably it's not between my legs it's above and it's very comfortable to put it there are two ways of putting it in you can put it in this way you can fold the cup this way and insert it inside or you can fold the cup with the punch down method and insert it inside both ways it opens up and the vagina surrounds it and the vagina produces a seal around it and all the blood goes inside when you want to insert it you need to either squat or you need to make lift up one leg on your pot and insert it inside when you want to remove it again you need to relax your muscles if your vaginal muscles are our introital area is not relaxed then you will find it difficult pinch the bottom and then take it out and just pour the blood that is in it into the pot and wash it with ordinary clean water so uh, menstrual cups being introduced as menstrual care pod products is certainly a boon for women and as a gynecologist i certainly would recommend and in fact i am um, you know giving them an option of of you know thinking about the cup um, and i do have a couple of uh, cups for demonstration in my opd um, for them to understand what it looks like and what it feels like. Um, because it's made of you know, bio-inert material and it's very supple and very soft, it's very easy to um, insert in the vagina. We use catheters and other equipment 
medically in and leave it in our bodies for ever so many days. So this is an inert substance that doesn't create any problems, does, doesn't give you vaginal infection, doesn't um, you know lead to any allergies. So this is completely safe. It certainly doesn't need any lubrication when the woman is menstruating because the menstrual blood itself acts as a lubricant. Every woman, whether she has had a baby or whether she's sexually active or whether she's menopausal, um, I de definitely recommend pelvic floor exercises and that's to keep the pelvic floor tight. But the cup use in general doesn't increase the vaginal capacity in any manner because all it's trying to do is, I mean, the cup is trying to just fit into the vaginal cavity, which is in a particular shape and it just sits there and it's a very supple material. So certainly the vaginal tone is, it takes over the, the shape of the cup or even the size of the cup. So it certainly doesn't loosen the vaginal cavity. For the cup to get lost, there's this is a dead end. Can you see this very closely? You can see that this is the cervix or the mouth of the uterus and this is where it is. It cannot go inside the uterus because the mouth of the uterus is very tiny. It can only stay in the vagina. So the cup cannot get lost under any circumstance. You have to relax. You have to bear down like you're passing stools and this will come down. Then pinch it so that the seal is broken. There are little holes here that allow the seal to be broken and it comes out. So and the nice part of the vaginal cup is that you don't have to remove it if you want to pass urine or stools. It stays inside and you, unlike the pads where you have to, these pads, if you're wearing it, you have to remove it to pass urine or stools. But with the vaginal cup, that's an added advantage you can wear it inside and not worry about it. When we deliver, this head comes out through the vagina. That's the size of the baby's head. It's the size of a coconut. Now, if a coconut can come out, then I don't see why we are scared of putting in a small little nimbu. That's something that you need to understand. You are comfortable with intercourse. Intercourse is like this. Where is the problem in doing this? So just get that thing out of your head that you are inserting something huge. No. Like any this thing, there is a learning curve. Whether you want to make biryani or whether you want to learn to make your, uh, put your lenses into your eyes or you want to learn any process the computer how to use it there is a learning curve so there is a learning curve for inserting the vaginal cup also into the uh, i mean the menstrual cup also into the vagina so this learning curve happens over the space of two one to two periods two three insertions two three removals and once you have mastered the act that is the best thing that can happen to you I don't think I would recommend it for postpartum bleeding, uh, essentially because the cervix has gone through certain changes during the delivery, it may be slightly bigger and also um, the lochia, I mean we would like to see the nature of the lochia and it's better to flow out, so I probably wouldn't recommend it in postpartum, especially because of the tone of the vagina as well as the, uh, the kind of the shape of the cervix as well, immediately postpartum. You can travel wherever you want, you can swim, the mobility with this is amazing. You can swim, you can travel, you can uh, run a marathon, you can do hard work, there is absolutely no problem. And anybody and everybody can use it. You can be a worker, woman in the fields and you can use it. You can be somebody who is running the marathon, you can be a swimmer, you can be an athlete, you can be a cricketer. You can be a you know film star, anything. So it goes inside and doesn't leak. So that is something that you need to understand too. And finally, what are the problems that you think is facing? There is no infection that comes from this because this is made from medical grade silicone, 15 milligrams of silicone 
that is used and inserted inside and you use it for five days. We Being a runner as well, I run five, ten, five to ten K on a regular basis and during, during my periods I'm able to manage running much better with the menstrual cups. So I certainly would recommend uh, menstrual cups to my friends and family and patients. So um, yes, I would uh, agree with the you know uh, the the slogan of being rash free, trash free, and almost cash free. Green the red. The other thing that I want you all to do is to be very proud of the fact that you are having your periods and talk about it, especially talk about it among your friends, talk about it to your girls, explain to them in advance and let's all be proud that God has given us periods and that we are getting regular or irregular periods. It doesn't matter, but please use the cup during your periods and have a happy period. Um, I love my period now. <laughs> I wish I was younger. I wish I had my periods going on and I wish I could have used this menstrual cup.